AI voice cloning is a tool. It can be used and it can be abused. Last week, I was made aware that Elecro, an electronics manufacturer and distributor, was using an unauthorized clone of my voice in some of their YouTube tutorials. Hi everyone, welcome to the Crow Panel course. I couldn't prove it at the time, but there are AI identity detection services like Resemble.ai that can at least give some input into whether it was a direct clone or something that sounds just Midwestern US male. Anyway, I made a short video about it because I wanted to make a point that it is not okay for a corporation to clone someone's voice and use it in their videos without that person's consent. It doesn't matter if I have zero subscribers or 50 million, it's just not okay. When I posted it, I saw a lot of hot takes. One common one was that AI is inevitable and I should just accept that anything I post online is in the public domain and can be used by anyone, so stop complaining. Another one was that I have a generic voice and they probably just used a generic AI voice, so I shouldn't jump to conclusions. Really? You think this voice has the same timbre and tone as generic voices? The majority of people saw it for what it was, my voice being stolen and used for someone else's profit. Now, in the video I did mention it was Elecro, but I didn't call for a boycott or ask for anyone to tar and feather them. There are a couple reasons for that. First, I didn't have 100% proof they cloned my voice, and I hate the idea of guilty until proven innocent. I even said I'm hoping beyond all hope it was an honest mistake. And second, this may surprise a few of you, but I went to a Catholic seminary for a few years. Now, obviously, I'm not a priest, but my faith is a huge influence on how I try to live my life. A big thing at the seminary was the idea of fraternal correction. Basically, if you have a grievance with someone, take it up with them first, then if that gets you nowhere, go to the authorities. A lot of people thought I should lawyer up or send takedown requests through YouTube. See, here's the problem. I don't want to make videos about AI. I, I really don't. I have a ton of projects on my desk. Like right now I have a new time hat for the Raspberry Pi and I want to tinker with it and share the project I'm working on. When you get into anything legal, it sucks up a lot of time and money. And my main goal was to make the point that it's not okay for a company like Elecro to clone my voice and profit off it. And besides, if you support this channel on Patreon, I want that money to go to making cool videos to inspire people to do new things with computers and electronics. I don't want that money going to lawyers. Leaning into the drama would also feed into the justifiable anger I felt about this situation. That's another thing I learned in the seminary. As a Belizean friend would say, do not let the sun go down on your rat. He meant to say, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. I have a wife and five kids. They have their own lives. For their sake, I don't have time to sit online stirring up drama. I really don't want to get hot and bothered about corporate ethics and all that, but believe me, I would if Elecro didn't respond. Because controlling anger is important, but that doesn't mean you have to be a pushover. Luckily, Elecro did respond. Early Monday morning, the CEO of Elecro, Richard Lee, replied, Hi Jeff, this is Richard, the CEO of Elecro. At first, please accept my sincerely apology for the possible infringement issues. Now, really quick, Elecro is a Chinese company. I couldn't write an email in Chinese without grammar issues, so I'm not going to worry about that at all. I care about the content, not the spelling. But he goes on. I noticed your complaint this morning from my colleague. We take this matter very seriously and conducted a swift internal investigation immediately. Through investigation, we found that the video was made by one of our staff called Blank, who's a fresh graduate and not fully acquainted with our company culture and didn't got enough training. He just thinking how to make the video get more popular, but didn't consider the copyright problem. And also the video was released without the approval of the department manager. We are ashamed and incredibly sorry for make this case happen. Now, that's a good apology. I mean, whether or not everything is true, I can't judge. I'm willing to accept it though. And even if it wasn't a fresh graduate and the CEO himself made the decision to use my voice, just accepting responsibility is something that so few tech leaders do these days. And the fact they got this email out early Monday morning after less than 24 hours means they gave the situation the priority it deserves. I'll have some thoughts on calling out the junior employee later, but Richard goes on. We will do following things immediately. Video removal. We have immediately removed all videos involving cloned voices upon receiving your email. This is a direct response to the error in our work and I kindly ask you to monitor us accordingly. They did take down all the videos I had mentioned and Tom's Hardware also went through a few more videos and didn't hear my voice in any of them. So good work on that. And I'm glad they're asking for accountability. They didn't just say, we took down the videos, now please stop bothering us. Moving on. Internal training. We have provided a profound criticism to our marketing team and we will strengthen internal management and personnel training in the future to enhancing their awareness of copyright issues and professional ethics. 
Honestly, as someone who's made a few of my own blunders as a junior dev, and even one time bringing down a multi-million dollar product launch for a few hours because I used a new AWS service without monitoring a critical resource limit, I hope they take this as a learning opportunity. It's a good time to reflect on not just voice cloning, but any other bad marketing tactics, like scraping email lists for marketing. Compensation. We willing to compensate you for any losses caused by this incident. Now, I spend a lot of time thinking about sponsorships, vendor relations, all that stuff. The number one guiding principle for this channel is honesty. I don't ever want someone watching one of my videos to think any word I said is not my own. That's why I don't do full sponsored videos where I follow a company's talking points about a product. And that's why I don't sell my voice for use by others. But compensation? I mean, I have had to delay publishing my next video, and content is how I earn a living. And I did ask a lawyer for some advice, and lawyers aren't cheap. And behind the scenes, I talked to a lot of vendors. If one of them saw one of Elicro's videos and thought, maybe we don't need to talk to Jeff Geerling because he's endorsing Elicro now. So what I proposed is they send me $2,500, and I'll donate 2,000 of that to the UOAA to kick off Ostomy Awareness Day in the US. I have an ostomy, and I want to help other people who might not have the same opportunities I do. In fact, I'm going to also make this video a fundraiser. So let's make some lemonade out of life's lemons today. Make life rule the day it thought it could give Cave Johnson lemons! But back to the email. Richard goes on, preventing future infringements. The occurrence of this incident has made me deeply aware that our content review mechanism is not comprehensive enough. We will strengthen our content review and release processes and welcome your active supervision. We guarantee such kind of issue will never happen again. That is good to hear. He finished his email with a couple more remarks about how Elicro respects IP rights and again apologizes about the whole thing. He also asked if I'd remove the original video, but I don't like to take things down if I think they're truthful and not harmful, so for now I updated my pinned comment on that video and I'll link to this video in the description. Now, overall, I'm happy they responded at all. So many companies these days address controversy by just not addressing it, and sadly, that often works. On the flip side, some could construe the response as kind of a caught red-handed thing, but either way, responding quickly and with a fitting apology and steps to improve is better than 99% of the tech world, so I can't complain about that. The greatest irony would be if they used AI to generate the response, but I, I don't think they did that. One thing I will complain about a little bit is the calling out of the individual who they say made these videos. As someone who worked as a lead on a number of teams, but never in management, I saw firsthand how people can grow from mistakes, especially junior employees who make big ones. You have to have discipline for mistakes, but good discipline leads to growth. There are times where you fire someone for a mistake, but this ain't one of them. The idea of trying to get more views on a tutorial series by using a recognized voice is a good one. Just the means of getting that voice was wrong. That's the lesson to be learned. So I asked about this, and Richard clarified in a follow-up email that the employee won't be fired or blamed. He said the company and the process was the problem, not the new employee. And that was very reassuring to me. Now, all that's about Elicro's response, but what I haven't covered is how they did it. How is it so easy to clone my voice that a new college grad could do it for a bunch of tutorials on their channel? Well, tools like Eleven Labs make it shockingly easy. I paid $5 and I immediately had access to a tool called Instant Voice Cloning. I literally just grabbed one minute from my latest YouTube video, uploaded it, and bingo, I have AI Jeff. And now I can type in anything and have my AI voice say whatever it wants. Some creators are even using this for their own videos, whether it's for shorts or secondary videos where they don't have time to record A roll. If you're unscrupulous, you could steal another creator's voice just by clipping part of their video. Like, I wanted to ask Dr. Ian Cutras from Tech Tech Potato if I could use his voice. Sure, Jeff, no problem. Well, as long as it's just in this quick example. See how this could be dangerous? And one reason this is getting so popular is because hiring a professional voiceover artist for just a few hours of video costs thousands of bucks and requires an ongoing relationship. Hiring 11 labs and using AI? 99 bucks gets you eight hours of text-to-speech a month. And that brings me to a conversation I had with Resemble.ai, a startup that's tackling issues like AI voice identity detection with new tools. Uh, my name is Zohaib Ahmed. I'm the co-founder and CEO at Resemble AI. Uh, we're in voice AI platform, uh, so we create AI voices as well as have a deep fake detection model. But very early on in our product life, we decided that we were going to build the safest way to clone voices. And in our mind at that time, what that involved was a uh, piece for consent. So when you clone a voice through Resemble, um, you are giving 
uh, your audio data. That could be like pre-recorded audio or you can record on the browser. Uh, but alongside that, you have to give a consent statement. And this is an explicit statement that we generate and you say it out loud. And that actually resulted in us open sourcing a model that did speaker identification. So um, it's our, our product is fairly simple to use. You have the ability to upload a file and you know click the tech. There's a bunch of advanced settings in there for like searching identities and uh, what we call audio intelligence, which is like commentary on the contents of the file itself. So it'll tell you like dialect, emotion, et cetera. Um, but the idea is that you give it a file, it'll tell you whether the file is fake or real um, out of the box. And then you know, uh, in this case, I kind of enrolled. Uh, I clipped a little voice clip from one of your original videos, put it in there, kind of label as Jeff. So it says like, oh, the closest speaker that's similar to this is Jeff. And you know, there are a few comments that even I think even you mentioned, like it sounds very much like me, but maybe it's a bit jarring. You could tell it's AI, but it sounds uh, undeniably like you. You can <laughs> generate a report that looks like this, which effectively, you know, gives you this visualization of the output. And what the model is doing, you know, it's not just giving you a fake or a real prediction out of the box but it is uh, actually analyzing it frame by frame uh, and telling you like what the prediction there is. Uh, this model, this defect detection model, it's been trained on different generative methods. So we've implemented various architectures internally and then created like terabytes worth of synthetic data that are created with different algorithms and different types of models. And so the, the model knows what to look for in terms of artifacts. And this is where deep learning is so important and so good is deep learning has this natural ability to kind of find patterns that may not be audible or visible to humans. And then voice is also like um, super new and as an attack vector, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's very dangerous. You know, like nefarious use of voices is, uh, is critical. And this is something that we've been thinking about a lot. And this is why we've invested so much money and time into building these models. The ease of access to these models is critical. And you can imagine like making a phone call in that voice with, with your voice to, you know, your parents or your grandparents, et cetera. To them, it'll be super believable. They won't, they won't even think twice about whether it's a fake or not. We've taken all of these measures to make sure that Cloning a voice is not impossible, but it's consent driven. I enjoy my seven hours of sleep at night and I usually don't think about anyone's going to use our product for anything nefarious. I'm a firm believer in making lemonade out of lemons. And honestly, if Elecro improves their production from this and I don't have to worry about them stealing my voice, that's at least a little win. And I found out YouTube does allow creators to take down videos using unauthorized AI clones. Thanks to Renee, the creator liaison, for pointing that out. AI is a tool. And right now, it seems like it's being used like a flamethrower a lot more than a pocket knife. It can be used well. I hope people will do that and not use it for harm. One way to ensure that is holding people and companies accountable for improper AI use. Until next time, I'm Jeff Gearling. Not AI, but the real human being version. You sure about that? Yes, I am.